Hello, and welcome to our broadcast on next generation hyperconvergence. We're going to talk about Cisco's entry into the hyperconvergence market with a new offering we call Hyperflex Systems. My name is Frank Palumbo. I lead, I lead Cisco's data center practice, and it's a real pleasure to be with you today. So I'm joined by some illustrious guests. We have Matt Eastwood here from IDC, who's going to kind of give us an industry overview on what's going on in the hyperconvergence market. And then we'll have uh, an executive from Cisco, Satinder Seti, who's the vice president of our development team for UCS and Hyperflex Systems. And then we'll actually have a customer tell you their story about how they chose Cisco's Hyperflex technology for their solutions. And I'll be back later to wrap it up. So we're so glad we're, we're, you're with us today. You know, when you look at the market, a lot of things have happened in the data center. We've gone from traditional applications to now cloud native applications. We've had situations where it required a lot of manual inter intervention and people to really things orchestrated by policy and automation. Now, a lot of us have focused on products, including Cisco, but really it's not about that anymore. It's really about focusing on the business outcomes. And what our customers are telling us is, hey, they need to be agile so they can react to the, all the different business issues that are out there. They certainly need to be visible. They need to understand the interactions between who's talking to who and all the different devices. Certainly need to be flexible and then really have the ability with their data center to transform their organization. And of course, this all has to be wrapped together with the right security profile. So at Cisco, we feel we've done a lot to disrupt the market through innovation through the years. It started out with us in the middle 2000s with data voice and video and kind of saying voice will be free, which a lot of people thought we were a little crazy for, but when you look at the market, it, it's really turned out to be that way. And then we introduced Cisco UCS in 2009, and really this is where people didn't think we could enter, say, the commodity x86 compute business and make it really a holistic solution built around virtualization with a network-centric approach. And then most recently, in the application economy or all the apps that are out there, Cisco's ACI, or application-centric infrastructure, which we've had great success with in moving forward with that whole initiative. And that leads us to today and to the future, where we're really talking about the next-gen data center, things at cloud scale, hyperconvergence, and really the next new feature in the data center that has to be there, analytics. So we feel we're very poised to introduce new technology with a full enterprise approach when we're talking about hyperconvergence. So to help me tell the story along the way and really give you an industry, uh, industry kind of view, I'm going to introduce Matt Eastwood to, to talk through what's going on from his perspective in, in hyperconvergence. Matt, how are you? Doing well, thanks, Frank. Right. So, uh, ready for Red Sox Yankees uh, this uh, fall, this this spring? Always am. Right. It'll be so, fun this year. So, a little thing between Matt and I, we got the New England guys and the New York folks here. We have to we'll talk a little baseball, but we're so happy to have Matt here because he always gives us great insight. You know what's going on in the market, and, and always gives us a little preview as to where he thinks it's going. Matt, well, take it away. It's a pleasure to, to be here and just to talk a little bit about what we see happening in the marketplace. So we see um, a number of things happening in the market. IDC started talking about third platform uh, seven, eight years ago now, and that's really kind of the, the mashup of cloud and mobile and, and advanced analytics and social. And really what that means for an innovation platform for our industry, we see lots of interesting things happening on top of that third platform today. In, in terms of things like cognitive computing and robotics and augmented and virtual reality. So there's really a number of exciting things, but for the user, it means that they have to go fast. It means that they really have to uh, drive their business and transform their business in new ways, put, in, put data into use in their business in ways that they haven't been able to in the past. So as a, as a backdrop, I always like to just ground this in a discussion around how quickly our economy is restructuring itself. And so if you think about uh, somebody like Clayton Christensen and the Innovator's Dilemma and the research that's been happening in that space, we know that over the last 50, 55 years as our industry has taken off and, and, and uh, uh, digital infrastructure is becoming a, big, a bigger part of how people differentiate, the average life cycle of a company is getting shorter and shorter. And the S&P 500 is a 
is a market index that's really intended to, to sort of measure what the U.S. economy looks like. And on that S&P 500, the belief is that 75% of the customers that represent that stock index will go away by, by 2027 or 2030. Yeah. So, Matt, it's funny because I think a lot of people thought like this whole digitalization thing was hyped. But it really is real, and you know we're going to see co co you know companies really win or lose based on their t digital strategy. Absolutely, and and you know if you take a step back and you think about some of the things Frank you were talking about, if you think about the investments and innovations that Cisco has done, if you go back to 1999, it, it's almost comical to think back. But this is a a quote from an analyst report, not mine, but an analyst report from a financial analyst that said that investor concern over the threat of new technologies is overstated. And this particular quote applied to a little company called Blockbuster, which if you think back now, and I have teenage kids, and I, I look at how they entertain themselves, it's all online, it's all streamed video. They don't watch traditional television at all, never mind renting a video. So this is um, really kind of set up a shift in how people think about even spending on technology. So what we see is a, f a move towards more modular consumption of compute. We also see compute and storage moving closer together. We see the need for data to be staged adjacent to compute being, being incredibly important with these next-gen applications. Um, flash becomes a, a critically important dimension for what people are thinking about and investing. And then also, everything needs to become cloud-ready or, or potentially cloud-native. And we see this one big thing at the top, hyperconvergence, really taking root and really driving a different type of consumption in the marketplace because it becomes about, again, that, that agility that folks really need in the data center to really program for these, these new applications. And you know, Matt, we're hearing that too because you, know, you hear this term easy button, but you know, really it's got to be that way because customers won't have a tolerance for, for the learning curve. It's got to be easy so they can inject it into their environment and really get the business value as soon as they can. Exactly right. And so when we look at uh, convergence, and we've seen convergence evolve over the last few years, uh, certainly the, the, the need to put not only the technologies themselves together, the compute, the storage, the networking, and the core management, but also a lot of it relates to organizationally, how companies think about technology and how they need these organizations that used to be quite siloed to really turn on their, on their side and focus on putting these things together in a way, again, that's ex extremely flexible and agile. So you can do traditional uh, convergence by bringing traditional compute network and, and um, uh, networking together, or you can look at something like hyperconvergence, which really takes kind of the core file systems that you would need in a, in a traditional storage world and actually bring those and host those right on the same server that's running the virtualized server resource and, and then really you know, kind of scale those out. Um, that's really been where the industry has been focused on, on developing the last few years. Yeah. And, and you're really going to see these silos you know, break down. And I had a customer correct me uh, the other day. He said, don't call them silos, call them cylinders of excellence. Okay, right? that's a good point, yeah. <laughs> so, so the cylinders <laughs> of excellence will be, uh, will be broken down. But you know, it, it's just a, kind of a natural progression, which I think started with virtualization and now moving us into hyperconverged. Correct, correct. And, when we look at how the typical uh, end user is spending time today, unfortunately, only around 80 per, about 80 percent of their time is actually going into maintaining existing assets, existing resources. So we see 15 to 20 percent actually going into innovation. And for companies that are trying to become more digital, this is a challenge. So they're looking for a way to create more efficiency in the data center. And there's a belief when we go out and survey customers that are doing this that they can get an extra 20% of efficiency out of their, of their data center organization by doing things like convergence and hyperconvergence, and they can apply that resource to innovation. Awesome. So we've seen this, you know, this, this, this evolution in the data center over the last 10 or 15 more years, going from traditional architectures into uh, virtualized uh, environments, and certainly what Cisco's done with UCS has been a big component of that transition. But you get to a point pretty quickly where the industry sees uh, virtualization becomes, a sa becomes saturated, saturated. And all of a sudden virtu virtualization goes from something that's helping customers save money to a component of their cost structure. And, they, and when they get to that point, they very quickly look at convergence as an element, a way to drive utilizations up further, 
to uh, increase uh, availabilities, to make things easier to manage, to make the, just the overall runtime experience in the data center that much better. And you also tend to see an intersection with something like hyperconvergence or this discussion today around software defined that focuses on becoming a bit more ready for what comes next. How do you make the infrastructure a bit more cloud ready? How do you improve the security of the environment? And I think those are lots of interesting things that Cisco's tackling. Yeah, so you'll see as we talk, as we, we, we've been looking at this market you know, you know, for a while, and we're a little bit of a later entry, but I think it's given us an opportunity to see you know, where the warts are, and certainly you know, preparing for virtualization, what containers are gonna mean into the whole hyperconvergence play is something that we've looked you know, fairly, fairly close at. And also um, making sure we have a, a, like an architectural or family approach because we've done a lot with converged infrastructure, which certainly still has a play, and as we add hyperconverged you know, into the mix. Exactly. And so what we've seen is you know, when people think about hyperconvergence today, and it's still relatively new sets of technologies that are out there, they look at um, both existing workloads and new workloads, and oftentimes there are mixed environments that are landing um, on these hyperconverged infrastructures. But there are challenges. So we see these first genera generation hyperconverged systems really focusing heavily on the scale out storage component, solving that aspect of the challenge that's happening in data centers today. But what we're starting to see is challenges with consistent performance for a whole variety of workloads in, this envir in these environments. We're also looking, they're also seeing customers that are looking for even more storage efficiency. They're finding that some of the offerings that are out there require them to over, still over-provision more than they would like on the storage side. And then the network piece is becoming more and more important when you start to think about the scale-out aspect of these environments. So we think the focus for the next phase of hyperconvergence really does uh, move to virtualization, the full vir virtualization, the full stack, as well as um, cloud. Right, so, so Matt, is it, you know, in your findings that, you know, it's still important to make sure the, like the right workload is, is on the right architecture or the right platform. Yeah, pe people very much think that way, and I don't think that thinking is going away. Um, but what they're, they're trying to come up with a, a simpler way of deploying more workload in that same pool, if you will. Yeah. And, and being at Cisco, we don't mind that you say that, hey, the network's important in there, too, because we're, we're kind of close to that. We don't, so. yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to so, forget about the network. Yeah, we're, we're okay with that at Cisco. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and, and, and it's it's actually an opportunity we think that's that's quite significant. So uh, in 2014, 2015, this, this converged market's already roughly 10 billion, but that includes a lot of these traditional uh, converged offerings like, say, a vBlock. Um, but what we're seeing is the, ad, the advent of, of, of uh, hyperconverged really pushing this market forward. So by 2019, this market is north of 17 billion, but what's really interesting about it is the hyperconverged piece is where, where most of the growth is going to be in the next five years. So we're, we're projecting a 65% compound annual growth rate around hyperconvergence. And, and in the data center overall, we're looking at a relatively flat, about one, you know, less than 1% growth. So a significant shift. And the mix in this converged pie moves dramatically to hyperconverged over the next five years. Interesting. So just to, to kind of summarize some thoughts here, you know, we, there are a really historic... A number of changes that are happening in business today as businesses try to differentiate more and more with applications and more and more with data. They become more digital and they're looking to do things with their, with their infrastructure that really require them to rethink what the data center looks like. The data center needs to become much more programmable, much more software defined, much more agile. Um, so many of the, of the technologies and the tricks that we've used as an industry over the last 10 years or so are running their course and we're looking for the next thing. And we think hyperconverged technologies really help bridge the gap between what enterprises are tr need to do and are trying to do with these, these new applications and, and making use of all this data and all these advanced analytics and really leveraging what's happening in the world of hyperscale, these big web scalers and how they're building infrastructures. So it's, it's taking those, those, those uh, techniques that a company like a Google or an Amazon might use and applying it to an enterprise with really branded and, 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 and rich sets of technologies that are easy to use and, and allow them to get up and running and, and become much more productive much faster. Right. And we see also like when you look at that environment that you just laid out, you know, how important things like policy are because you have to have some you know, policy to kind of navigate you know, that whole environment you went through. Exactly right. So that, that, I hope those are just a, f a few words from me to hopefully to, to get this uh, 
the show off and running and, and put some context around what we see happening more broadly in the marketplace. I'm happy to engage with, uh, with the audience. Um, if you want to tweet or, or comment or send emails, I'd be more than happy you to You can give that. them a hard time about the Red Sox. That's, that's okay too, right? Absolutely. Right. That's, no. that's all get fair game. But Matt, I'm so glad you're with us today because, I mean, you know, in, your, in your market overview, uh, I think it's important uh, for our customers and, and for the people in and around our, what we call our Cisco ecosystem to really understand that the hyperconverged market is growing. It kind of parlays into converge, which, which we've done some, some nice things in and for our customers. So, um, you know, I really appreciate the way you've laid that out. Um, My pleasure. Forward. Thanks, Frank. All right. Hey, we're going to roll a video which really kind of goes through our Hyperflex environment, and we'll come back with Satinder Seti to really get into the product and tell you what it's all about. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed the video on Hyperflex. So I'm here with Satinder Seti, who's the Vice President of our UCS development team, and I'm so glad to have him here, Satinder. Frank, How thank are you? you for having me here. Right, you've been working hard, the team's absolutely. been working There's hard. There's no other choice, yes, right? absolutely. Getting our hyperconverged solution out the door? That's correct, right? yes. So Satinder, uh, I, we need you to go through kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're doing with Hyperflex, but before we do that, you know, you know, let's, let's tell our audience and our customers that we're, we're, we're not just trying to shove a solution into the data center in the corner. We really took the time to make sure we had a full architectural <coughs> approach here. Absolutely, Frank. I think that's, that's the core philosophy of what we have done here. So over the last seven years, we've seen tremendous amount of success with UCS, with converged infrastructures, with our customers. And one of the promise and commitments we made to our customers was that we're moving them towards this data center transformation journey and we are going to be uh, you know, building out an architectural value proposition where we drive efficiency in the data center, agility in the data center, and not build silos, right? So we've been true to that promise as we have sort of scaled the architecture. We've completely stayed form factor independent in the UCS build out that we have done, whether it's blades, racks, density optimized, whatever form factor they want to deploy, it's all part of the same control plane, same fabric, same management plane. Uh, delivering tremendous amount of value to our customers. So as we started to look at hyperconvergence, which is sort of the you know, evolution of converge to more simplicity in that regard, we wanted to make sure that we don't proliferate any new silos for our, data, uh, for our customers. So we took a very thorough approach in ensuring that whatever we build is an extension of the architecture that customers have been deploying. So that's been the core. So as customers scale their environment to newer workloads, new applications, uh, new operational models, they are basically extending their current architectures and not throwing away what right. they had. And, and Satinder, that's so important to our customers, yes. where they don't have to you know, throw things out and relearn it. We can kind of move Precisely. along that path with the knowledge base that they've already built in to that's their right. staff yeah. and their own ecosystem so they can move forward. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, Frank. So, you know, just talking through that, I mean, if you look at the first generation of uh, the hyperconverged vendors, uh, there's certainly an advantage to simplicity, right? And that was core where customers are saying that we need our environments to be more agile, more simple. I want to be able to bring things up quickly. Fair point. I think uh, some of the competition out there in hyperconvergent space, the first generation vendors went and did that. I think they did a pretty good job on the simplicity. Uh, but in getting fast to the market, you always have to make some you know, choices. And it's unfortunate that when you're trying to do that, you end up making some choices which probably are not in the best interest of the customers. Uh, as, as much as you know, they may seem right at the time. So you're talking through that management silos. You know, I mentioned earlier about you know, a very sort of focus on not 
proliferating any management silos, but if you look at the first generation of hyperconverged solutions, they're basically an island in itself, right? Whether it's running a VDI or a virtual infrastructure, it doesn't integrate, for example, with the rest of the ar architecture that the customers have. Networking was, for example, an afterthought into that. Um, the other thing that we heard from our customers who've deployed these, uh, some of these solutions out there is there's very inefficient scaling of the system, right? You have to buy these building blocks together for capacity, compute all together, and it's not how enterprise applications work. Uh, the other area we saw was, you know, the kind of performance capabilities on the first generation one were, was an afterthought because we're trying to do simplicity first. We didn't think about enterprise application performance requirements, and now, uh, you know, you have to turn off some of the compression, dedupe type capabilities to get to, um, you know, the kind of performance customers expect. So you're always making those trade-offs. And that's, that's not how, you know, we're thinking about this uh, solution. We want to make sure that the customers who want the simplicity also get integration with the existing data center capabilities. Uh, customers who are thinking about um, scale-out are also doing that in the context of efficiency that they scale. Uh, and last but not the least, when they look about existing application deployment, uh, it's also about how do you protect that for the next generation of applications that are going to come. Great. So it takes, a, you know, a much sort of deeper thought into how do you build architectures for today and where do you take them tomorrow. Right, and like you said, you know, um, sometimes taking the networking as, a, as an afterthought, yeah. really, where you know it, it really plays a vital role into the whole migration and connectivity back to what they're doing, Absolutely, you know, is, is obviously something that, that Cisco's proud of, that's what we do pretty well. Exactly, yep, yep. So, uh, we're very proud to bring to market a uh, Cisco Hyperflex system. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm going to go into a little bit more detail yeah. about. So, Cinder, why don't you take main stage there and take it away and get into the guts here of Hyperflex. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, we, we brought to market, we uh, launched this a few days ago, a Cisco Hyperflex system. And basically what this is, as I talked about earlier, it's an extension of, you know, the architecture philosophy that we've had in the data center. We're calling it complete hyperconvergence. The reason for that is, as I said, for us, networking was not an afterthought. We have integrated networking and compute in the context of UCS a while ago. You know, a highly differentiated platform that we built with UCS, with software-defined uh, computing capabilities, stateless computing aspects, unified management, management that can actually do both physical and virtual infrastructure at the same time. So all of those capabilities and a, a system that was built for scale-out computing is actually the underpinning of this hyper, Hyperflex system. <clears throat> and what that allows us to do is, is take this to the next level with a data platform, what we call as HX data platform, which is at the end of the day a, um, a file system, next generation file system that allows us for optimization, always on, uh, flexible scaling capabilities, and builds out a platform that will deliver the next generation of hyperconvergence that's not just ready for today, but also for the applications of the future. We are going to be focusing a lot on VMware-based environments day one, but then it's going to scale out to container, container as a service, more two applications. So what we're bringing to the market is a platform that's ready for today, is ready for the future, and customers will be able to ado adopt it for enterprise applications and operational models for the future. So talking through some of the differentiators that we have done is there's a lot of effort that went into building out a purpose-built file system that was designed for distributed storage and hyperconverged computing. This is a log structure file system. A lot of the Gen 1 vendors out there took a little bit of shortcuts. They took existing open source file systems, built capabilities on top. Obviously, that produced some limitations, as you can see. This is designed for distributed scale-out storage. It gives us a lot of benefits, and I'll go into more detail about that. Inline data optimization, performance capabilities, superior flash endurance. We all know that today we are in a hybrid world. We are headed towards much more of all flash capabilities. So an architecture that takes, cap takes into account the fact that you're going to be in a flash world and you don't have to go redesign your system for those flash capabilities is what basically a must for us as we design this system. So as I talk through some of the innovations of this platform, one of the core capabilities of any converged infrastructure today, even with some of the legacy storage platforms, is that you have the ability to scale compute as you need to do that. You can scale your caching tier on the storage, or you can scale capacity. But if you look at some of the first-gen hyperconverged solutions out there, they force you to actually scale everything in lockstep, compute, cache, and storage. 
So one of the core principles for our development was that we are going to be building an architecture that will give you the flexibility of scaling exactly how enterprise applications scale. Sometimes they have need for more compute, more caching, or more storage. So this architecture that we bring into the market has a ability to scale across capacity nodes with our CCDs rack servers. It can scale across blades. So we have introduced blades into this architecture for computing capabilities. And if customers choose to have more cache, then you can have more SSDs either in the compute blades or in the HX nodes or um, the storage nodes, basically. So allows <clears throat> tremendous amount of flexibility to scale across any of those vectors as enterprise applications require. And once again, going back to when you look at the future, your environments are going to change. So the system will adapt to those changing needs of your environments. The second critical element of the log structure file system we built was this is a dynamic data distribution. So the idea here is that the system does not mandate any kind of data locality requirements. So all of the VMs that are running on a compute node do not necessarily need to have the data on that same node itself. As you can imagine, by doing that, depending on the workload that you're running, you could end up with hotspots with those controller VMs. So in the case of Cisco Hyperflex, we distribute the data across the cluster that gives us complete flexibility of leveraging the cache pool that's available across the entire cluster. So you can imagine in, in a case where you may have to evacuate VMs from a node or a node dies, you don't have to migrate the data at all. So there's no tax that you're putting on the network. You're basically migrating virtual machines over to a different node where capacity is available. And with Cisco UCS underlying stateless computing, you take the service profile, you apply it to a new node, your VMs get there, and you're up and running in minutes. So the system is capable of not just distributing data, but handling failures extremely gracefully. The third element of this is the continuous data optimization. And now this is a key factor for a lot of reasons. One is overall utilization of the system itself, capacity and performance. So the way this file system was designed, it always allows inline compression and inline dedupe. As you would see that some of the vendors outside have taken a shortcut approach here where if you turn on the dedupe or compression, your performance degrades dramatically. So we wanted to make sure that the system we're designing is not just for some small-scale robo applications, but for, in fact for enterprise applications. So this gives us tremendous benefits in terms of scaling out our enterprise application environment. And then the management piece. So one of the fundamental reasons for UCS success has been the management capability. We brought compute network together. We provided a single pane of glass from a management perspective, whether you're running the systems in your edge, in your data center, on the cloud, it's a single pane of glass. So we took a lot of pain in ensuring that customers do not have to go and learn new, new um, interfaces or new UIs in that regard. We're taking the install base, the benefit of UCS manager learning out there and leveraging that as the front end to completely manage your system. For all of the storage needs, we have put a plugin into vCenter. Most of our customers are extremely familiar with vCenter, virtualization administrators. That is the interface we would be leveraging to go configure all of the data store capabilities of the system. So existing UCS manager, existing vCenter, that's exactly the UI we present. So extremely seamless uh, management interfaces from customer experience perspective. So when you take all of these capabilities together, what does that deliver to the customer? Extremely efficient and agile infrastructure that can be brought up in a customer environment, not in weeks, not in days, but in a matter of minutes. So in under an hour, you can have your system cabled up and then your virtual machines and you know, applications like VDI coming up. We're going to, be, going to be shipping this as a factory integrated system. So it'll come out with your uh, ESXi, uh, your file system all deployed on it, and then get the configuration of the actual virtual machine being done on site, and all of that in under an hour. Uh, with some of the innovations that I talked about, they deliver tremendous amount of benefits from a TCO perspective, 80% data reduction with always on compression and dedupe, higher performance in most of the application cases, and at a very conservative, conservative level, a 30% better TCO. Um, very, very compelling entry points from a price point perspective, but overall a very compelling TCO. And last but not the least, the most important element, it's not just designed for mode one applications, but mode two applications as well. As you start to move into more container-based environments, the, the system will scale with your needs. So, 
I also want to touch upon the fact that HCI is not a hyper-converged solution in itself that Cisco is bringing out, but in fact, it's based on a broader Cisco technology footprint. And that's key because over time, we have done a lot of work in the data center architecture by simplifying computing, by simplifying networking, and now we have the ability to bring the power of all of these technologies together in one holistic architecture. So I talked about scaling off Hyperflex. So as you start to add more workloads, more nodes, and you scale that environment, ACI, integration of uh, ACI with Hyperflex now allows customers to basically have rapid uh, uh, application delivery, secure application delivery, and a common policy orchestration across this entire architecture. So multi-tenants running, multi-applications uh, running, applications require different SLAs, they have different security requirements, all of that managed by a common policy orchestration engine on top. And that is not just dedicated to the HCI environment, but in fact, you may have conversion uh, architecture, you may have best of breed uh, components being put together. This common policy orchestration is across all of that environment. So bringing tremendous amount of value to the customers who are looking at more enterprise scale architecture and, uh, and, and scaling that out. The other important element of um, you know, our integration here is infrastructure as a service. So Cisco has been delivering private cloud capabilities with uh, UCS, with converged architectures, with enterprise cloud suite for a while. You know, we have seen tremendous adoption of that. And now with Hyperflex and enterprise cloud suite, we're basically taking that whole private cloud delivery model to a new level because it's all software defined now underneath and it allows us for secure cloud segmentation, and by having baked-in capability of Intercloud Fabric, you can now seamlessly extend those workloads into hybrid cloud, Amazon, Azure, with secure VM mobility. We also expose a rich set of APIs for PaaS integration at the next year. So covering not just hyperconvergence on-prem, but also giving customers the ability, as they want to take advantage of public cloud for that secure VM mobility, that capability is built into the system. So if you look at the entire architectural underpinnings, from a Cisco perspective, we're delivering the best in the, in the industry software-defined networking, software-defined computing, and now software-defined storage stack with the HX data platform as part of the Hyperflex. So a truly industry-leading software-defined architecture with a common policy orchestration with ACI that provides the security automation, whether it's edge, data center, physical infrastructure or a virtual infrastructure, and extending all of that capability to both private as well as hybrid cloud. So all of the data center trends that we talk about, we talk about enterprise applications scaling across these environments, we are making sure that when customers deploy this, they are getting the complete architecture value uh, with these technologies. So what are we bringing uh, to the market very specifically? To make the consumption easier for our customers, we have packaged several different offers which will allow easy deployment of different workloads in different environments. So we would have a up to eight node cluster, a minimum of three node cluster, uh, which is all based on you know, our C220, the one RU form factor uh, rack servers. It is for VDI, for remote office, branch office applications. But then as customers require more capacity, we can scale up to the HX240C nodes, which is based on the Cisco UCS C240s, which allows then other business applications, test, dev, test and dev environments, for example, again, scaling from three to an eight node cluster. And last but not the least, as I said, the architecture allows a mix and match of racks as well as plates for different variable capacities and compute capabilities that you require. So that also has been packaged as a three to an eight node HX node cluster plus a compute, uh, compute blade architecture that goes along with it. So once again, we have validated multiple, multiple designs, multiple enterprise applications across this, optimized the architecture, but at the same time giving you full flexibility to pick any CPU SKUs, any memory con configurations, any kind of capacity configuration across all of these. So there's full custom configuration capability as well as some fixed configurations that are available for, uh, for all of you. Uh, the other important element I want to highlight is we're bringing this to the market as a software subscription model, which allows you much more of pay-as-you-grow model. You buy only the capabilities for that year, and then you continue to extend that software subscription as, as you desire as you add more nodes, for example. 
And again, all of this managed entirely through vCenter from a storage perspective. And we have been at it uh, for a few months now, having several of our customers uh, testing this platform across multiple different verticals, as you see, healthcare, high-tech, retail, et cetera, because we wanted to make sure that this is a solution not designed for a particular vertical or a particular use case. It is very broad. It is enterprise class. It is for enterprise applications. We have multiple use cases being tested across all of these um, industry verticals, and we have gotten tremendous, tremendous feedback around performance, around resiliency, around some of the cost uh, parameters. Um, and right now, what I want to do is actually roll a video of one of our customers' memorial care health system um, to see a testimonial from them, and then we will have Paul Holt from memorial care here with us as well. Memorial Care is a regional healthcare delivery system based out of Southern California. We have uh, hospitals, freestanding imaging centers, medical groups, offices, and what we do in the IT division is support the infrastructure for Memorial Care. We are a 7 by 24 shop. Just being able to provide that care seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year really is a lot and really is important. That's why we're here. We needed to move out of the aging data center into a more proven, world-class data center. So having made that decision prompted us to look at our infrastructure and then develop a whole new best practice around what information technology platform do we want to have in our new data center. The reason Memorial Care decided to go with Cisco is we knew that we had a good partner going ahead. Uh, we looked at technology trends like uh, hyperconvergence and software-defined networking, and it just made a natural decision to kind of continue down that road in order for us to meet our business objectives. The software part will allow us to do stuff more on demand, uh, give us the flexibility that we really need. Instead of having to think physically, you can think virtually. We need to be able to support our business from a technology standpoint, and we feel that the hyperconvergence technology will help us do that. Welcome back, and thank you, Satinder, for really going through Hyperflex and, and all the exciting elements about it. And, and really, uh, we're so excited to have Paul Holt here from Memorial Healthcare. Thank and, you. And uh, Paul, you made it into the studio with us today. So um, before we get into why you chose Cisco for, uh, for Hyperconverge, tell us a little about Memorial Care. Well, Memorial Care is a health system in Orange County consisting of six uh, hospitals and is a $2.5 billion business. We have 241 locations throughout, the, all wow. the way from Los Angeles down to San Diego and uh, overall, and to deliver care. We have an independent physicians association, and we support uh, also affiliate uh, physicians that have their own business where we are, we are they're our customers. Well, and you know, Paul, you know, we talk about you know, agility and all these different things that we need to do in IT or in the data center, but in your industry in healthcare, with all the different you know, regulations and movement, you know, it's, it's almost, it's got to be a way of life for you every day. Oh, absolutely. We have over 514 applications that we you know, take care of and shepherd every day, and so it's a very dynamic environment. And there, you know, we've been in a very high growth uh, period over the last three years, and having the ability to keep up with that growth and you know help the business do what they need to do is is our number one priority. Right, and, and no more important job than you know getting people healthy and oh absolutely and, and, and healthcare. Yeah. So Paul, tell us a little bit. You know, you were looking at the market, right? I'm sure you looked at some others. You know, how yeah. did you make the decision on Cisco? What, what was your thought process? Well, uh, several things. Um, we already Cisco is already one of our good good partners and we, we, we already had UCS in, in our infrastructure and we, we've had Cisco networking for over 20 years. So what we were looking at was also what our, because we're healthcare, in, in, when you were in a healthcare environment, your software providers are very important to you. So we want to not only partner with our hardware, <clears throat> but we need to partner with our software providers. So having their stamp of approval on on products is very important and Cisco was one of those people where we knew we could get their stamp of approval for that product and so that's why we chose largely chose Cisco right and so Paul when you when you look at this you know hopefully it's meeting your needs today but where do you see you know, this type of technology and, and, and more specifically what we're doing in hyperconvergence you know where do you see that taking you and, and memorial care in the future 
Oh, th that's a really good question. Uh, one of the things I tell my team is, is, you know, eventually, I just want you guys to get used to just working virtually and look at everything as just a, a, a virtual appliance. So we want to look at this as a next step to help us in a kind of a hybrid environment to go between the cloud and our private cloud and really create a memorial care private cloud. And for that, we can choose which applications work better in, in the cloud and are more cost effective to right. run out of the cloud and which ones are more cost effective to run in house. It's a it, true like hybrid approach is true to hybrid where, approach where the workload would go. Absolutely. Right. And, and the other thing uh, it's just for us really the seamlessness of between going from the network to the storage to the compute is very very important for us not having to be a uh, system integrator ourselves, right? And working even with our reseller, working with our partners, but still having that pre-configured system, it just simplifies things. Right, so that, that whole ease of use theme, which oh, we know, uh, you know it, yeah. it's always important, but I think in this hyper-conversion market, it's even doubly important that, you know, that easy button is there. It is absolutely the number one thing. And, and we have so, we're, so many more demands today than we have in the past that have, taking that time to both bring it to market but also to operate it is just not acceptable anymore. So we are really looking for the next thing to get more out of our resources, right. both so, compute and people. So Paul, if you were giving advice to you know, uh, potential buyers of hyperconverters out there, what, what advice would you give them as, to, as they look for solutions? I would give, my advice to them would be, look for a company that has a very good support system you want that and a very good engineering because you want a product that you can get to market fast and you want a product that support we're we're in the medical industry high availability is our most critical thing right we we need to get care <coughs> we need to take care of patients seven days a week you know 24 hours a day 365 days a year right so it's it's not just about the technology it's about the support the reliability yeah. all those different things yes. wow yeah well, Fantastic story, Paul, and I can't thank you enough for being here with us and, and helping us out with our, our really our entry here into the hyperconverged market. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for being with, with us here today. I just got to leave you with a, with a few things. This is a complete solution from Cisco, a complete hyperconvergence story, really based on next-gen uh, software technologies, which is future-proofed, ready for the different applications for containers, for hybrid cloud, all those different things that you're going to look for in your environment. And also, it's important when you're talking about Cisco systems, this is a vendor with worldwide support. We have tax, tax centers all over the world, you know, channel partners for, for compute over 3,000. So this is an approach with a vendor that's big time in scale, and we simply do not let customers down. We wouldn't enter this market unless we knew we were going to win and be able to support you and your business objectives. So again, we're, we're proud of our technology, but we're even more proud of our process and our people. So hopefully you look for Cisco when you're making your hyperconverged solutions, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you very much for being part of this webcast. Take care. Mm -hmm.